Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to chat with your guys about starting a faceless channel. Many artists told me that, hey, I wanted to start my own art channel, making money, promoting my art on YouTube, but I couldn't show my face. I totally understand. Maybe you have a nine to five job that requires confidentiality. Maybe you don't want your privacy to be exposed. Maybe you just couldn't bring yourself to present on camera because you are too camera shy. Whatever your reasons could be, today I'm going to help you to brainstorm some ideas. First, I would like to walk you through the pros and cons of having a faceless channel. After hearing me, if this is something you still decide to do, I'm going to present you eight ideas, eight different ways to start a successful faceless channel in 2022. I'm going to put timestamps in the timeline below, so if you would like to skip certain parts, you can navigate directly to the parts that you would like to watch. Without further ado, let's start today's video. I'll start with the pro. Pro number one, you don't need to make up. You don't need to dress up and you don't need to clean up your home. This is the most desirable characteristic to my opinion um, because in the summer, it's really hot. I have to put on makeup, brush my hair, make sure my shirt is ironed, and I could not even have my AC on because that would be too noisy for my microphones. And I have to sweat like a pig for the entire duration of my recording and all this retakes. Between every retake, I need to change my shirt to wipe down my sweat. And it's like so inconvenient. It's so much time, effort spent. And sometimes I just wished I started a faceless channel. Then I don't need to worry about none of it. Number two, it allows you to stay mysterious and have a life. If I say who is the most mysterious artist alive today, of course, a famous one, people would say Banksy because Banksy did not show his face on camera and he could travel the world and be this really cool, rebellious street artist and make a lot of money and people would not even recognize him. And that's really convenient, right? Who doesn't want to just take the money without having the burden of being a public figure. Number three, people don't judge you based on how you look. Um, nowadays, everybody feels insecure about how you look. For example, you know, I am very insecure about my hair. And even when people comment nicely saying, oh, your hair looks so nice, you know, they are so um, straight and black and, you know, yeah, I, my hair is like this. So that's good. Thank you, mom, for giving me nice hair. But I'm still very insecure about how I look with my hair. Like my hairline is very uh, high. And sometimes when people uh, notice my hair, I'm like, oh, did they notice that I have a very high unnatural hairline? And even people say nice things and you might still feel very uncomfortable. And that's why if you don't show your face, you avoid a hundred percent those comments because they could not even see how you look. Now let's talk about some disadvantages of having a faceless channel. Con number one, uh, it requires you to have more effort to establish a personal connection with your viewers. Um, that's why famous brands like luxury brands would pay a lot of money to have stars to endorse their brands to be their ambassadors, because you need a face to establish a meaningful, a personal connection with your audience, with your supporters, with your fans. And if you don't do that, you would need to uh, spend more time on perhaps script writing, on audio recording, um, um, maybe your art or some other ways to engage with your audience. Uh, if you show your face, voila, you just basically talk and people naturally would feel engaged with you. Number two, people would look elsewhere. Like if I don't show my face right now, the camera would even start focusing on other places and even the exposure would be off, I guess, because this is the algorithm of the 
cameras nowadays, they would look at your eyes and focus on your face automatically. And people would notice more the messy background, the audio quality, and maybe people would comment on your voice, like, oh, your voice sounded funny in that video. And you'd still get offended or upset about those kind of comments. It's even easier just to show your face and then people would at least just focus on your face. And it would take a very mean person to comment badly about how you look. Number three, you can be copied much easier or easily sometimes. Um, for example, we both go to an art fair, you and me. Let's say ARCO 2022 that is taking place in the months if the pandemic is not going worse. And I'm going there for sure to cover this event for you guys. And let's say I go there and I show my face. You go there, you don't show your face. And guess what? Whose video would be copied easily? Yours because art fair is like this. There are so many art, so many booths, so many gallerists, and so many aisles to walk down. <laughs> and if you record without showing your face, it's very hard to uh, make a differentiation with someone else's video. They didn't want to copy you, but if you put a camera walking down the aisles, they do the same and your videos would end up looking very similar. So if you don't show your face, this is definitely a disadvantage. People would copy you even without knowing that they copied you. Now, after hearing this, uh, you still want to make a faceless channel. You're still not convinced by all the disadvantages. Then maybe you can try making some videos. I will give you eight different ideas and hopefully one of the ideas could be inspiring for you. Number one, overhead time lapse or speed painting. This is the most classical and you just put the camera 180 degree parallel to your table when you are drawing, sketching. The camera automatically naturally don't capture your face, but you will not have usable audio. So you would have to record a voiceover if you want to engage with the audience. Number two, screen recording. For digital artists, if you are painting with Procreate on iPad or you're making Photoshop tutorials on your computer, you can use your built-in screen recording apps or you can use OBS uh, Studio, those kind of apps to record. You don't even need a camera. How convenient is that? If you don't have money to buy a proper camera, then this is a really good way. Again, screen recording would not give you usable audio automatically. So you might want to do a voiceover after you speed up your videos. Number three, talking to the camera from the neck down. And this is a very funny way to not show your face. I have seen two people doing this. They're both Chinese YouTubers. One of the videos is very nicely made, I have to say, with um, subtitles and with animations. And I was like, with all this effort, he could totally show his face. Like he wear something nice and he, you know, showed a very nice background. He didn't have the perks of not showing your face and he didn't have the perks of showing your face. Like, you know, I feel it's a bit in between and a bit awkward. Like right now, if I just show from my neck down and that would just look a little bit odd. It's my personal taste. Maybe you like it or maybe you're making some sort of craft videos and you're having just exact the cut that is very convenient for you. Maybe perhaps you can try, but personally, I feel this is very odd and I would not recommend. Number four, wearing a mask or covering your face partially. Um, some YouTubers would wear the uh, mask that is like for street artists with filter. This item is readily available to you if you're a street artist because this is something actually useful and you would normally wear. So it doesn't look odd that you are making like some sort of a Halloween custom. And you can also wear... Um, a pair of sunglasses, like, uh, you know, whichever pair that you have. Uh, usually you would have uh, darker sunglasses to cover your eyes so that you can hide your identity. I know a Chinese YouTuber, a very famous one. He does lifestyle videos and sometimes art videos as well. Uh, you can check him out. This is his 
icon. This is the way he appears. And I find it very natural and he can walk around and having really clear audio quality because he's not covering his mouth and hiding a part of his identity. Number five, shooting from point of view, POV. Uh, many sportsmen would shoot like this. And this is very convenient because you can free your two hands. Um, but I would not really recommend artists to record POV indoors because usually you would use GoPro or a Osmo Action, those kind of action cameras. They have very wide angles. And when you paint close to the canvas, it would be very awkward. It's distorted and in low light, they don't really have very great low light performance. So I would say if you do plein air outdoors or shoot an art event, that's totally okay. That's even uh, better than an average camera because you don't need to worry about the rain. Uh, maybe you say, can I use a normal camera and put it like on my body? Yes, you can, but uh, it's not so convenient to carry something bulky. By accident, you can damage a very expensive camera. That's why I say, you know, maybe you don't do this. You just make an overhead shooting or shooting from behind. Number six, animation. You can use uh, different kind of animation apps like uh, Houdini, After Effects, or even Photoshop you can make animation with. Nowadays, there are so many apps in the market that allows you to make very wonderful creative things. However, I don't really think you should make animation using the very cheap, easy to use softwares because they look very generic. They look too simplified. And as an artist, you might want to run a art channel that provides a better quality, more original, more put together animations. Um, maybe it's uh, too much work for you. There is another alternative that is number seven, video. Video essays. I don't know if you call it this way, but at least from film school, I would call video essays. Basically, if you are a video or a photography artist and you would put uh, some moving image and some poetic voiceover and combined with some texts, but not any sort of texts, very beautifully put together texts. Uh, like this video uh, is a really, really touching, nice video. Um, if you want, I'll put the link in the description below. You can check it out. Number eight, reviewing other people's works. Uh, maybe you're an art teacher. You can review your student's portfolio with their agreement. You can review some famous artists' masterpieces, but not like criticizing them, but like appreciating them, of course. Um, you can also make some uh, very cliche videos, like the most expensive paintings in the world or the most expensive street art paintings in the world, and then the most expensive portraits in the world, you get my idea, right? It's almost a human nature, I would say, to be attracted to the bigger, the better, the stronger, right? And if you make a video that is the longest list of something or the most expensive something, uh, people might get uh, very interested and they think it's a one-stop shop to learn all the things they need to learn or, you know, is the most interesting video to learn about the most most interesting and most expensive paintings. So it might be too cliche for you, but you know, it does work, at least in my experience. Now you have heard the pros and cons and eight different ways to start a faceless channel. Hopefully you liked this video. If this is the case, make sure you click like. And before finishing this video, I would like to thank our patrons. Thank you very much for your support and have a wonderful 2022. Cheers.